Hello, my name is Mr. Exum and welcome to my EdTech channel where I show you how to get the most out of technology in the classroom. Now this video is designed to give you an update on how to use Microsoft Teams meetings for remote learning in 2022. So there are various ways to start a live lesson in Teams. The quickest and easiest way is to go to the class team and to go to the general channel and just click this meet button here. That will instantly start a live uh, lesson for that class. And if it's in their calendar already, they will be able to join that. You could schedule uh, a lesson here by clicking schedule a meeting. That may be if it's outside of a normal timetable lesson time, so they're not expecting to have a lesson, you might wanna do that. If you need to schedule a meeting with a group that are not already set up as a class team, then you would go to your calendar and you would schedule the meeting from within there by clicking up there, schedule a meeting, and then adding whatever recipients you need to to that bespoke meeting. This is a normal timetable lesson that I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna to go to that general channel in the class team and click meet. I can give it a title up here. There we go, Tuesday lesson two. And I've got my mic is switched on, just check that that's switched on. And I've also got my speaker volume here. If I need to go to more settings in terms of choosing the correct camera or microphone, then I pick the little settings cog here and that will allow me to choose the relevant correct devices in terms of microphones and uh, speakers and cameras. And if I want to change my background, I can do that with the background filters option here. When I'm ready to start the meeting, I just click join now. And when the meeting starts, you'll be prompted with this little box. And this is the quickest way if you've got just a couple of uh, students not in your lesson, if you've got the majority of them in class, but a few missing, you can just click the add participants button here. And then you can literally just type the name of a particular student you want to add uh, who's in the class, but you want to kind of prompt them to join the lesson. This is the easiest way to do that. So stud test four is uh, part of this class. So I'm just going to request that they join and then they will literally call them so they know that the lesson has started. If we switch to the student view, you can see that it says that I am calling the student here and they just have to click accept. They've also got a join button. They can see the lesson's already started. I don't need to do this, but it's a way of getting those individual students who may not have joined initially to your call. Okay, so here I am in the lesson and I've got a student who has joined, which is perfect. Now you probably uh, will need to record it. So that's up in these three dots here and then you can switch on start recording. You'll then see the little red light on here to show that the meeting is now being recorded and that will be automatically saved into that Teams channel where you are doing the meeting. Okay, so let's say I want to show a PowerPoint. I've got quite a few options with this now. If I've got a PowerPoint already open, you'll see there's a new button that says present in Teams, and I can just click straight on that, and it will automatically upload that PowerPoint into Teams and launch that in my meeting. Now at the moment, they will see the PowerPoint on their view, but in this presenter mode, I can actually switch to this, this thing called Standout. What that does is it cuts me out and superimposes me over the top of the uh, PowerPoint presentation, which is quite nice. Uh, if I want to stop them moving through the presentation independently, because they do have the ability that I can click that and that will stop them uh, being able to do that. And I've got some nice things here, like a laser pointer that I can do when I'm talking through things to explain what's going on and some pens. So in a lesson, I want to share some other content, not just a PowerPoint. I can do that by clicking on the little share icon up here and that will give me other options. I can choose how I am then shared along with the content, whether I want to stand out like I just showed you on the PowerPoint there or go side by side or put it in a little window like a report. I'm gonna choose that option here. I've, the important point to mention here is the including the computer sound toggle. If you want them to hear the sound, so if you're maybe sharing a video, I'm gonna click on window and I'm gonna choose my browser uh, because I've got a YouTube video there that I want them to see. 
And what's annoying is sometimes you forget to click that little toggle to share sound. But there's a quick way to switch that on if you do forget. If you just move your mouse up to the top of the screen, you'll see the different presenter views. So I can just switch back to a traditional presenter view if I, if I like, or that one where I'm superimposed. But I can also toggle the sharing the computer sound on or off very easily just by clicking on that little button there. So at the moment I'm sharing it, but if I click it there, I'm not sharing it. And now I'm sharing it again. In terms of students raising their hands, what's quite nice now is that if you are looking at the participant list and a student raises their hand, then it shows you to raise their hand, but it also puts a little number next to them to show you who raised their hands first, so you can then respond to questions in the order that the hands were raised. And if a student forgets to put their hand back down, that's fine, because you can do that on your one here by just clicking on the little three dots and clicking lower hand, and then it gets rid of their hand. Something else you can do now is that you can click on the three dots here and you can disable mic for all attendees and this will completely disable them. They won't even be able to unmute themselves if, if, if you have this, which is a great new feature because uh, in previous um, versions, uh, students could then just unmute themselves and that could then cause lots of unnecessary noise. But in this case, that, that student can't unmute themselves unless I click on the three dots next to them and allow them the option for that. So I click allow mic. They're still muted, but now they can unmute themselves if they need to, to say something. But it's a nice way to be able to hard mute everybody in the meeting. Last thing to talk about that's worth sharing is when you click on the share icon here, content from camera. This is um, a nice option, especially if you are doing the hybrid learning where you've got pupils in the classroom in front of you and also some students at home, like this example here. Because if I choose whiteboard, what I can do, I can get my camera to be pointed at a nearby whiteboard uh, and it will detect that whiteboard surface. Um, and therefore, uh, as you can see, it's trying to do that now. I don't have a whiteboard here with me, but um, it will detect what it is. And then, it's trying to do it now. You'll see that I'm superimposed. I go into more of a ghost-like form. And so when I'm writing on the whiteboard in the class, I'm not blocking out the writing. Everybody in the class can see it really well, and the students at home can see it well because I'm just more like a ghost. I can stop ghosting myself uh, just by pressing that and come away from that, or I can switch it back on. But the writing you'll see will just be still be able to be seen due, due to this artificial intelligence through all the students. And it will perfectly detect that whiteboard space for you and just show that. You can do a similar thing if you switch to document by putting a document in front of a document camera or a webcam if you've got one of those connected. And the video option can be useful if you need students to focus on, for example, a, a science experiment demonstration you're doing. So this is a really nice way to share content when you're teaching students both in the class and also uh, at home. When you finish your meeting, just click leave meeting. As you can see, I can download the attendance report and I've also got the meeting recording shown here as well. There are other great new features in meetings such as more advanced breakout rooms, uh, live transcripts and captions and translation that you can do. But I think these are the most important features that you need to get up and running for your uh, hybrid live lessons in 2022.